Hey Yaki Gang, Yaki Tori Guy here. Now that you've learned how to break down a whole chicken and make various skewers, here comes the fun part. We're gonna be grilling them so you can finally eat what you've been working on. In our first video, I talk about what yakitori is. Yaki means to cook or grill with heat or fire, and tori means bird, so in this case, chicken. So the art of yakitori, it's about breaking down this whole chicken and rebuilding it so that when it's grilled, Every distinctive skewer is delicious in its own way. So the thigh has its own flavor and texture, the breast has its own flavor and texture. The way you're gonna skewer them, the way you season them, the way you grill them, the way you garnish them, they're different for every skewer. So in today's lesson, I wanted to show you guys what I do for the seasoning, the grilling, and garnishing so that you guys following along can make the best tasting yakitori possible at home. Now, Yakitori means grilled chicken. So there's different ways to grill the chicken. The three main ways are with electric, gas, or charcoal. Now all these equipment, they do the same exact thing in that there's a hot heating element that's gonna indirectly cook the chicken. And what I mean by indirectly, the chicken is not touching any of the hot heating element like you would do, let's say, in a frying pan. So indirectly, the chicken is being cooked. As it's cooking, it's gonna drip out the fats and the juices, and those fats and juices, it's gonna go down to this hot heating element. So with this electric grill, we have the hot coils. With the charcoal grill, we have the hot red glowing charcoal. And when those juices, they fall onto that heating element, it's gonna sizzle and create that delicious smoke that you guys love about yakitori, that grilled, smoky chicken of yakitori. That's what's made with these grills. So. Of all of these three methods, definitely the one that's talked about and the praise the most is gonna be with charcoal, especially the Kishu Bin Jotan. So Kishu Bin Jotan, it's a very special and rare charcoal from the Wakayama Prefecture. Kishu is an old word for Wakayama. They are made using the ubame, Japanese oak wood. And these are essentially logs or, you know, logs like this that basically are heated up and over, over a few day period as it's heated up, it's carbonized and it gets concentrated into these hardwood charcoal that heats up very hot and can last few hours. And so this is the most ideal charcoal for yakitori. And so all the highest rated yakitori shops in Japan, they use Kishu Bin Jotan. So the Michelin star restaurants, the yakitori shops, they use Kishu Bin Jotan. It's not cheap though. So for example, at the shop that I was working in Japan, we actually had three different grades of binchotan and we just mixed it up just to sort of save costs. But the cheapest one was $100 for a box of like 25 pounds. The most expensive was 300. And that wasn't even the most expensive kishu binchotan you can get. So you can imagine at even the higher rated shop, they're gonna be using much more expensive binchotan. So it gets very pricey, especially when you consider that if you have a charcoal grill like this and you're packing it up, you can use easily half a box to a whole box in any given night, maybe even more. So it's very expensive to cook on, but you get the best tasting yakitori from it. So if you want the best tasting yakitori, when you go to these shops that are using kishu binchotan, made by a master, using the best chicken, the best cutting method, the best skewering method, and the best grilling method on Kishu Bin Chotan, that's by far gonna be the best yakitori you're ever gonna taste. However, there are other cheaper alternatives. There are other Bin Chotan that's not made in Wakayama, so it's not Kishu, but in other prefectures using other type of wood or in other countries. So I have here, these are Bin Chotans that are from different prefectures in Japan, as well as Vietnam and also Thailand makes similar hardwood binchotan style charcoal. Now you can also get, this is called ogatan. This is not binchotan, but basically it's made by compressing wood particles, wood chips. So think of this as a synthetic binchotan. Much more cheaper alternative. It's been um, incorrectly marketed in some shops as, hey, we cook with binchotan. Not sure if you see these one with the holes in it. And so if you want to know if you're eating with binchotan, it may not be kishu binchotan, but if you want to know if you're eating binchotan, just look for basically these, they just look like wood logs, black branches or logs of wood, and that's binchotan. And this is definitely the best flavor that you're gonna get for yakitori. However, it creates tons of smoke, 
and also releases carbon monoxide. So you can't really use these indoors. So when I use my charcoal, I use it in the backyard during my weekend yakitori cooking sessions in the backyard, as well as for my pop-ups, I'm using it at a restaurant where they have that strong commercial vent that's able to suck up all that smoke. So the charcoal is definitely the widely most popular talked about sort of grilling method. However, these two, the electric and gas, they're actually more the common grilling methods when you go to Japan. So if you go to your corner izakaya or corner yakitori shops, especially the, the cheaper ones where it's really delicious by the way, basically you got the $1, $2 skiers and you got the cheap drinks. The, probably one of the better izakaya experiences going to those type of places, beer and yakitori, really delicious. but. And it's also very smoky and you look behind the kitchen counter, it's smoky so you think they might be using charcoal but if you look very closely, it is a commercial grade electric grill or commercial grade gas grill. And they do that because it's definitely much cheaper to use the gas or electric, also just easier maintenance and it's really convenient because they both have this on and off switch. And so for the purpose of our video series where I'm really trying to teach you guys how to make good yakitori at home. I wanted to focus on the grilling method that you guys can easily replicate at home on a day-to-day -day basis. So here we're going to use the electric grill. This is a home electric grill. This is the orange barbecue grill by Live Art. There are other brands that have the electric grills, but this is something that I've been using for the past few years, even before I was making yakitori. And what I like about it is just the same with the gas, just the convenience of this on and off switch. And especially with the electric, just the consistent temperature that I can get out of this. It really helped me become better at yakitori because I can now focus on making the chicken, cutting the chicken, making the skewering and any of the garnishing seasoning. I can focus on that because I'm not fighting the flames. I'm not fighting the smoke. I'm not fighting the weather. If it's bad weather outside, I can't use my charcoal grill. So I definitely recommend uh, for the day-to-day -day use or if you're starting out, if you really want to accelerate your growth of yakitori, this electric type of grill really helps out. And, but I still enjoy using my gas grill and I still enjoy using my charcoal grill. They all have their pros and cons. So I do hope eventually I, I wanna make another video of showing how to use the, especially the charcoal grill outside. But for the purpose of today's video, especially because I know that a lot of my followers have been purchasing specifically this grill, I wanna show you guys how to use this to make the best yakitori that you can at home. And so as you can see, I have a few sort of tools, equipments, and, and ingredients here, plates, some knife, cutting board, and these ingredients are here. So as I grill, I'm gonna explain about each of these items that I have here, but I think we're ready to start grilling. Let's get to grilling. Okay, I have everything I need for grilling set up in this table area. Got some plates, got my grill, it's warming up. Here's my container for my tare. I have my cutting board, got my lemon limes, a knife, salt shaker, sake spray, torch, and this is a container of all the various condiments that I want to use, as well as some tools. I have scissors on hand, brush, some chopsticks, and extra skewers. And this is in case any of the skewers burn off. I always want to have extra skewers on hand. And lastly, and normally you want this refrigerated as you're using it. You don't want to leave it out. So you just want to get the skewers that you are going to use, put it back in the fridge and get it out each time. But I have all the skewers that I want to cook right here. So we got the chicken tenders. Here's a mix of the neck, shoulder, a few negima right here, chicken thighs, breast, the oysters, skins, the lollipop, shisamaki, and wings. So I wanted to show you these. These aren't exactly all the skewers that you're gonna get from the chicken, but just some. And they have different methods that I grill them or season them. So I wanted to show you guys in this video. So now that we have everything here, I'm gonna go ahead and start grilling some of my first parts. So I'm gonna go ahead with right here. So these are the chicken tenders. I'm gonna do both of these, two of these. Season with salt on both sides. Put it on the grill. So today for the grill, I'm using the lower portion. It does get a little bit hotter. 
it prevents me from putting as much skewers on there because of the skewers in that lower position. When it's higher up, I actually can fill up a little bit more, but this will work for me today. Just wanted a little bit hotter to show you guys what it'll be on the hotter temperature. So what I just did, I salted it. I'm also gonna spray sake. So about the salts that I'm using. So the salt, it's just kosher salt. Just uh, you can buy, you know, just rough kosher salt that you can find at the store. And then I have a salt shaker here and I'm using the kosher salt. It's really big grains of salt. It allows me to see how much exactly I'm putting on. Whereas smaller salt, it might be harder for me to see, especially if it's in a darker environment. And so you always wanna salt both sides first before you grill, and you can definitely salt as you go too. Sometimes the salt might drip off. And the sake spray, that was to add moisture, a little bit of sweetness, umami. It's gonna actually caramelize over the, the yakitori a bit. So the salt is just bring out the flavor, and the sake is to really add the extra flavor, the coating, the sweetness to the yakitori. The moisture from the sake really helps to prevent the yakitori from drying out. In terms of salts though, in different shops, some people can get really uh, particular about their salts, different sea salts, or even, even roasting the salts. Um, in the shop in Fukushima that I was at, we would roast the salt before sprinkling on, and they would hand sprinkle, the master, he will hand sprinkle on. So there's just different methods. I just found that I'm much more consistent if I use my my salt shaker here. So I've been using the salt shaker. And the reason why I'm using kosher salt, it's just really cheap and consistent. And it's for me, good salt. And I don't want to go with any fancy salts. I wanted to just really get good at yakitori with just basic items first. And you know, when I hit like a wall of flavor, then I want to maybe try different salts. So that's my philosophy behind the salt. In terms of sake, so for this one, I just have it filled with shochikuba. It's a very, cheap sake that I can find at the grocery store. It's what I use to make my tare, it's what I use to spray. Now in Japan, basically the sake that the masters use, I, I've asked them, hey, what's in your sake bottle? And the one thing they all told me, it's, it's always their favorite sake. And for me, my favorite sake, it'll be, it'll be very expensive. Sake is so much cheaper in Japan, it, it's like, getting your, your table wine. You can buy a bottle of good sake for you know, $10 each and here it'll cost $30 for that. So I'm only using shochikubai, it works for me. However, as like a little sort of ritual of mine, whenever I do these yakitori parties, whatever good sake we're drinking for that day, that first sake that we're taking shots of, I actually end up putting it in here and we always spray that first spray with the sake that we're drinking as a group. So, all right, so here it's cooking. One of the sort of the benefits of the lower grill method for this though, it does get closer to the coast, so it cooks a little bit hotter. But what I don't like about it is this part of the grill gets in the way. And so it's actually lifting that back end. So the back isn't really touching the coils. But yeah, just cooking, you see the, the back and now the, the top side. Yeah, if, if you just want to add a little bit more, if it's starting to seem dry, you can add some sake right here. But it's definitely looking moist. And that if you use good chicken, fresh chicken that you just cut that day from a whole chicken, generally it's going to stay moist. So let's go in here. And I like to basically cook all the sides too. At the yakitori, traditional yakitori grills, it's usually on a rod. And so these skewers have been rested on the front and back on a rod. And oftentimes it's just the front and then the back or the top and bottom. But you can also flip it to the sides and grill it. And that way you can ensure that it's cooking all the way through. So as this is grilling, I'm going to start grilling my second piece that I want to throw on there. So I'm going to go with, this is my neck, shoulder, and butt thigh area. Let's go ahead and sprinkle some salt, both sides, on the grill. Also get some sake on there on both sides. So for this one, this is the chicken tender, so it's sasami. I'm going to be using, I'm going to be garnishing it with wasabi and also ume. So ume is, this is ume 
or this is umeboshi meaning pickled plums. And you get this by taking unripened plums, lots of salt, and purple shiso leaves, and that gives it this red color. And you can get ume paste. This is like a ume paste right here. I also have another tube one like here. You can get these, but I actually made my own paste right here by taking these sour plum pickles and chopped it up with some shiso leaves. So I want to use that as a garnish on this. And the wasabi normally what's really common, popular at any of the good yakitori shops in Japan is wasabi on the chicken tenders. And that would be called basically sabi yaki, so wasabi yaki. And the wasabi works very well on chicken tenders or chicken breasts. And when I was working in Japan, we were hand grate fresh wasabi. Unfortunately, right now, I can't really get fresh wasabi, so I'm using this tube one. However, this tube one, there's different grades of wasabi, ones that are definitely more just dyed horseradish, and then this one is actual wasabi paste, so it has a nice more, it's not hit your nose, spicy taste, but more of a wasabi taste. So right now, it's definitely cooking on all sides. So with the electric, what's nice is that it really isn't creating too much, too much smoke here. But I think it's still a good idea if I open up the, the window. I'm not going to turn on the vents. However, having the windows open gets the air flowing. So if this was charcoal, it's going to be hotter start cooking much more quicker. But I really like the pace of this electric grill when I'm especially at home. It allows me to just really focus, just, just check to make sure things are slowly cooking. Another thing about uh, using this electric grill is you don't really, if you have big pieces, so imagine like an inch thick steak or something, that's not gonna cook on this. But with yakitori, each of these pieces are very thin and small, so it does cook up nice on this. So I can see that it's still pink in the inside of this, so it's still cooking. If I wanted to, I can just add a little bit of sake just for the extra moisture right here. See that it's where the brown area is, it got a little bit dry. You don't have to drench it in sake, but just coating it, this just really helps. So with yakitori, it's really about sort of this rotation because you really want to fill up this whole grill. And if you're at a restaurant, you have all the different seats. They're not all sitting at the same time. So you have to make sure everyone's getting their grills on time. So it's all about rotating. So I started with this one. Now I came through with this one. Then I'm going to add my next set of skewers. So right here, this is my negima. So negi means in between onions. This is the negima, the, I call it the Hokkaido negima. This is using the drumstick, the lag meat. You can tell the color is a little bit different. So the lag meat with a little bit of the, the red onions. And then this is with the green onion, thai meat. And this is the same thai meat, but without the onions. So for any of these skewers with the skin, I actually go skin down first. Then, and salt it. And as I said, using a kosher salt, I can see exactly how much salt is going on. I'm also gonna spray with some sake. The reason I went skin down for these skewers is I really want that skin to get nice and crispy. So I'm giving that the first go to just let it brown up on there. Let's see how these are going. All right, these are doing great. So these ones, I just salted. So these three salted, these are salted. The negimas, I have salted it, but I'm also gonna be 
flavor in, in the tare. With this Thai one, I want to keep it just uh, basically just with salt. And when you go to yakitori shops here in America, there's, oftentimes I've seen them, they give you a menu and you get, they give you a choice. Do you want it with shio, which means salt, or tare? And so tare is the sauce. In Japan though, if you go to mostly these, um, they're kind of more omakase. You can order by the skewer, but oftentimes you go and you sit down and you say omakase, omakase mas, meaning you know you trust the chef and he just brings you out whatever skewers until you're full. And it's usually up to the chef or that restaurant in Japan to go with the shio, the salt, or the tare. So actually, yeah, this one I'm gonna do with tare. So the neck and the shoulder one, I'm gonna do with tare, along with the negima, I'm gonna do tare. And my sort of, my deciding factor and what I wanna serve with tare, anything that's very sort of heavy in flavors, so in this one, or has chewy consistency or fun consistency, fun flavors, so in this case, the neck and the shoulders have a nice sort of chewy, fun consistency. I want to enhance that with a deeper tare flavor. But anything that might just be straight more juicy, so in this case, just thigh meat, just a pure thigh meat, salt, and a little bit of lemon or lime, it really just brings out that natural chicken essence. So with that, I go with the shield. So yeah, this pretty much chicken tender is almost done. I always actually start with the chicken tenders and this is sort of the order that I'm going at that I want to serve. And I have a few other skewers in between, like the innards normally in my dinner service that kind of go in between here. But I always start with the chicken tenders first. And it's a very light, delicate, tender flavor. And I want to start with that first because I want people to experience the just the subtle flavors and the subtle texture of these, these tenders. If you can see, so what I'm doing behind here, right here, let's see. So I have chicken tenders, so wasabi on one skewer. Then this is a ume paste, basically chopped up some ume go. So looking good so right here this is the first set of skewers that I would serve so this is sasami so we got wasabi on this side and umeboshi or shiso ume on this side. And this way I want you guys to really enjoy just a sort of simple, very, let's call it plain, but it's very juicy flavor of these of the chicken tenders. So normally I actually do wasabi, plum, wasabi, plum, all on one skewer so you can enjoy the, the different skewers on one. So we got one of these. Just leave this to the side right here. Okay, now these are ready to go. So, start with this one. This is the neck. I'm gonna dip it into my tare. So, what is tare? Tare is basically just means sauce. And the important thing about tare is for yakitori shop, it is a very, something that people hold, it's the spirit, it's something that people hold at pride because it's the spirit of the shop. The basic components of tare, it's gonna be sake, sugar, and soy sauce. But it gets most of its flavors from dipping the chicken and letting those chicken juices fall back in there. So it's all these flavors from previous dinners. 
and even you know the onions all those flavors going but i never put anything beyond chicken in there even if i'm doing like a shrimp skewer or something i'm not dipping that in but the chicken i always dip in there and people ask hey would this go raw uh, raw because you know would this go basically bad would it would it rot or ferment you're not really putting raw chicken in there you're putting this chicken it's almost ready to serve and i'm just dipping it in there and as I dip the chicken skewers in there, the hot chicken skewer is actually cooking this tare. And this is a plastic pot, and this is a plastic grill right here. But normally if this was at the yakitori shop in Japan, this would be all hot charcoal grill, and this would be a clay pot. And that's actually warming it up right there. So it's being heated up constantly, but you're not really putting any raw chicken in there. So you don't really have to worry about it going bad. So I dipped it in a few times just to make sure it kind of gets that caramelized flavor on there. Let's go ahead and put the skewer on there. For this one, I'm going to go with some shichimi, which is a Japanese spice blend. So this is shichimi right here. You guys can see. This is from uh, the shop that I was at, Yakitori Moe, Moe West, Roppongi. So let's go ahead and put some shichimi in there. So right here, we have neck, shoulder, and butt area. So as these are going, I want to cook the sides and add some moisture. I also didn't salt the sides, so now is a good time to, to salt the sides. Flip it on the other end. Let's salt the sides. Oops. A little bit of sake. So to keep these up, you can definitely use the size of these. And this is the, the paddle skewer. So that's actually help holding it up. It might flip down, but this is holding it up. And you can always use the other skewers to sort of hold in place, like what I'm doing right here. Okay, so now that these are up, let's get going. The next round of skewers. So I have here, this is chicken breast with the fats in between. So chicken breast is normally considered very dry, but I like to put the chicken fats in between. That helps it basically melt the chicken fats over the breast and stays juicy. This is the chicken oyster, the inner thigh and the tail. I'm gonna put that one skin side down. Let's get salt on both of these. Put salt on the underneath here. Spray. Let's get these flipped. So as these are going, I want to put some lime with this momokawa. So basically chicken thigh skin. So let me Put some lime right here. Always have a towel in hand so I can wipe as needed. Some shiso leaf. And then for the momokawa, in addition, so anything that I don't use the tare, so with salt, I'm gonna use either the lemon or the lime. And I always add a little bit of more salt so that it just gives like a little bit more salt kick at the end. That's not traditional. Like there's different shops that may add some salt, other shops don't, but this is how I can add color to the plate as well as that extra sort of oomph at the end of just salt that's gonna hit your hit your mouth because it's just at the very end. So right here I have, I'm using just for color, this is Ikasumi Shio, it's black squid ink salt. So I'm gonna be using this for the momokawa, the thigh. 
All right, let's get these grilled chicken breasts going. So with the electric grill, as you can see, it's still gonna nicely crisp up the skin. However, there might be some gaps where the, the heat's not reaching it. And that's where it's nice to have basically this torch. So this is my butane gas torch, this Iwatana torch. Basically, this is the same cartridge that you can use for stoves for you, you guys might have it at home for cooking hot pot. So I like having this. And also, this is the same can that I use for my, my gas yakitori grill. So it's nice to have this. And I use this to really touch, touch up some parts that I, I want a little bit crisper crispier. So for example, on the bottom of these skewers, I see that the skin didn't crisp up the way I wanted to. It's nice and crispy on the top of the bottom didn't. So this is where I'm going to use this torch and just kind of get it out there really lightly. You're not burning anything. And even the top, it just kind of nicely pulls itself together. And that's all you need. And this has been a very helpful tool to just really get the skewers looking the way I want it to. Adds a little bit of maybe that sort of fire charness. So that's been very helpful. All right, so this is the momokawa. Let it go a little bit. I'm gonna move these to the side because I want to dip these into the tare. So these are the negima. This is the negima, dai negima. This is a drumstick negima. So to plate these, let's see. So the dai negima with the green onions. I normally serve this with a microgreen salad and I put that on top, but I don't have access to the microgreens right now. So I'll serve this one as is. And then for the Hokkaido negima though, I want to add a nice spice to it. So I'm gonna be using the karashi, Japanese hot mustard. So these are looking good. They're pretty much ready to serve. So at that point, I'm gonna dip, get it all the way into the crevice. Now I like to make sure I can Get all that tare back into the pot. If you're going fast, or if I'm at my pava, I don't really have time to do that. So do that, shake it off of it, and it goes back on the grill. But I like to be very resourceful with this tare. And many people have been asking if for my recipe for my tare. So I'm gonna have upcoming video on how I make my tare show a few, few simple steps. The basic one is with the sake, mirin, sugar, and soy sauce. That's basically the same tare that I'm constantly making and it adds flavor from all the different skewers going in. However, there's ways to supercharge it by adding some bones and maybe some onions in there that you roast beforehand. So that kind of gets the, the tare to have more of this flavor of aged tare. And what I mean by aged tare is so tare, the more you use it, it's gonna absorb these chicken flavors. And as it goes down, you add more tare to the top. So that's tsugitashi tare, meaning add more to the top. And so all the yakitori shops, they've had their same pot of tare, often for years. The shop that I was working at, Kushiaki Anchor, uh, their, their tare actually is about 36 years old. It went from Los Angeles back to Japan, and it's been at this shop for 36 years. I've had tare at a shop that is a 50 year old tare, a 100 year old tare. And the thing about these old tare, it's definitely sort of the shops, something that they, they brag about, as in, hey, our, our tare has been with us three, four generations. And so my tare right here, it's been with me since I started Yakitori. So I would say as of, as of today, it is two years and, and four months old. So still a little baby but I always keep, this is my mother pot. I have extra pots just for safety. I don't wanna lose one or drop one and lose all my tare. So I always divide them out. And the tare has actually traveled with me 
everywhere. Uh, Pop-ups in LA, Orlando, New York, Chicago, Seattle, Portland, all over the Bay Area. And then even the shop, uh, Yaktori Moe West in Tokyo at my end of my work there, they asked, hey, do you want, you want to take some tare home? So I brought a bottle back from Japan and, and put it in my mother pot. So definitely has international flavors going on right here. All right, so I'm gonna put right here. This is the Hokkaido Negima. So the drumstick and the red onions with tare. This one I recommend to eat with the karashi mustard. And this is the regular negima with the green onions, which just eat on its own. But these are both negima, different onions and also different meats. Dai meat and then the drumstick meat. But in terms of condiments, I'm telling, I'm recommending my guests to eat it with the karashi. However, you can put whatever you want on it. Try different ways. And so this is the negima right here. And here I have the momokawa, which I'm going to top with some of this black squid ink salt. Adds a nice color as well as this sort of salt taste. So lime and then some salt and then just the natural juices of the chicken. I also put in shiso and the shiso leaves, it's actually going to collect a lot of the chicken juices and with the lime juice, actually tastes really good at the end. So this is how I plate my momokawa, chicken thigh with skin. All right, so next these are going. I'm gonna add some, spray some sake on there. So as these go, let's go ahead and start putting the next round of skewers. So the chicken lollipop, knee cartilage lollipop. And then this is the breast skin. This is the combination skin. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and put these wings on here. The wings actually take a while. They take a little bit longer time to cook. So I'm gonna leave this wing on here right now as all these others cook. Definitely want to salt these up right away. And put some salt on both sides. So this chicken breast with the fat, it's ready to go. So for the chicken breasts, I'm going to top it with yuzu kosho. Yuzu kosho is a type of Japanese, so it's made, it's a spicy condiment made from yuzu. So Japanese, essentially Japanese lime with a little bit of pepper and it's fermented and it's made into this spicy, salty, but delicious sauce. I'm going to use this tube form, but you can also get it in these jar forms and all of these they go very well on grilled food items, especially like on yakiniku, this is good, but on yakitori is definitely good. So the, often, the reason why I like to use tubes, it allows me to essentially just put it right on top, get the perfect amount, just squeeze it on, get this on there. This is where the torch can come in handy too. I use this torch and I can heat up that yuzu culture just a little bit. And right here, so this is mune, so breast with the chicken fat in between, and then we use a kosho on top. Running out of space here, but maybe we can move all this off. So next, right here, we have the oysters ready pretty soon.
And so what I'm looking for to tell if it's ready or not, definitely looking at the shape of the meat. It's gonna become nice and round plumpy as it cooks. I'm also looking at the color of the juices. Make sure that the juices are clear. I also like to have a nice sort of crispy edge. So right now it's the skin has got a nice and golden. But there's definitely a shape that forms with the yakitori as it sort of plumps up. And that's pretty much when I know it's somewhat done. Just leaving it on there, crisp up that edge a little bit more. This one, it's gonna go with some salt, both sides. So I have here, this is sanshio plant, the leaves from the sanshio plant. So it's called kinome, ki, Basically means tree and me means just a small the blossom or the the child of the of the tree. So there's actually a flower here, the Sancho flower. It's very rare. It's a nice, nice smell. So I'm gonna use this as a garnish for this really decadent piece, which is the most tenderest part, the oyster, the inner thigh, and the tail. So put it right here. Chop it with these scissors. Here we go. So a very decadent piece with some sanshio kinome on top. Now the reason why I have these scissors, it did help me cut this sanshio, but it's actually not for that when cooking yakitori. In this case, we're using the electric grill, so it usually doesn't happen. However, if this is on the gas grill or the charcoal grill, let's say you have, on this case, this sort of frail piece of skin right there. That's actually gonna burn quickly, catch on fire, possibly char up a bit, burn quickly. Like right here, it's getting a little black. And with yakitori, you don't really wanna serve people darkened black, bitter charcoal Yakitori. So you use a scissor to, to, to cut that edge. So if this is, imagine if this is black, you use this to cut it. With the electric, that's probably not gonna happen, but the scissor is definitely arsenal that you have to help you with that. Same reason why I have extra, basically these are skewers. These skewers are here. This one got a little bit of ume sauce. The reason why I have extra skewers is to really help when this is grilling, the skewer might catch on fire and then I pick it up, it might snap. I need another skewer to re-skewer it and I can put it back on the grill. So it's very important to just have all these extra things. These sort of accidents, they kind of happen. It's totally normal. So burnt skewers, that's gonna happen. Burnt edges on the meat, that's gonna happen, but you can fix as you go. And that's, that's totally normal. It's, it's not cheating. It's just part of yakitori grilling. So let's go ahead and flip these. Now, if you guys noticed, so I'm gonna put sake on here, but I did not put it on these skin skewers. And the main thing with sake, it really helps moisturize. With the skin, I want it to crisp up. And so I'm not gonna put any sake on it because I want this to essentially cook out, render all its fat. And then the sake is just gonna end up adding extra moisture, coat it with the, the sugar in there. And I wanna prevent that because I want all these fats to basically render out and get nice and crispy. So these are going, so I'm ready to put this skewer on right here. So this is my shiso maki, shiso wrap skewer. Some sake on there, salt. Right now I did do sake first and salt. As long as you're doing it at the same time, it's generally gonna be okay. Okay. Let's 
getting out all the equipment or the garnish ingredients I need for the upcoming skewers. So next up, we're gonna do this lollipop. Has the knee cartilage in the middle, has green onions. And if I'm in a hurry, you know, I'm doing my, my dinner service, we're using electric grill, I can throw this on my gas grill that runs a little bit hotter and that can hurry up and cook these. But I also have this torch and I can also use this torch to just start tightening up that skin, cook some of the edges. But you don't want to cook all with this torch. You still want to get it nicely, slowly grilling on there. But in terms of if you want to touch it up or get it going quick, this definitely helps. Okay, so for this one, this knee cartilage lollipop, I want to put some tare on there. However, I don't want to dip all of this in there because I don't want the tare to have, or this skewer to have too much of the tare flavor. So that's when having a brush can help. And I use this brush anytime I don't want to mix the flavor of that skewer in there or if I only just want a little bit of the tare. So for example, if I'm doing my liver skewer, I actually don't want that liver flavor in my tare. So I will use this brush and then just brush it on. So I only want just a little bit. And then let that char. And then for this, I want to serve it on Let's go ahead and use this plate. I have here, this is yuzu kosho, so similar to that green yuzu spicy paste, but I found this in Japan. It's basically yuzu kosho powder, so it adds like a nice citrus tang, a little bit of spicy, a little bit of salty on one condiment right here. So I'm going to use that for this. So now that it's basically nice and I can see the fats dripping out, ready to go. With some yuzu kosho powder. Here, so this is the knee cartilage lollipop. skins to go. So I talked about the skin skewers in the skin video last week. With skin you want to pack as much as possible using that weaving action and that way you get golden crispy on the outside but still meaty and chewy on the inside. And so this is actually one whole chicken breast this much skin packed into each, this skewer. This is a combination of Right here from the bottom up, it's the butt and the belly skin and belly meat. And then you've got the shoulder and neck skin on top. So as you can see right here, we got a little bit sort of burnt piece. Chop that off. So with the skin, this is the raw skin method. In the previous video, I also showed you guys how you can pre-boil the skin, which makes it easy to skewer. It does lose a lot of the fats, and when it loses the fats, it's hard to get crisp on this electric grill, which is why I keep it raw. However, if you were to do this on, on the Binchotan charcoal grill, it, it gets crispy because it's much hotter temperature, and, and then that smoke is gonna wrap that the skin. And another other way to add flavor to the skin is, you know, dipping it into the tare. But I like to serve the skin with just shio, so salt and lemon. So I'm just going to let these flavors work its way. 
and add some salt as it cooks so the salt can basically permeate because I see all the juices sizzling. And so as I explained in the intro of this video, what yakitori really is, is you got a hot heating element. So these coils and the, these skewers are not touching the coils. It's still suspended about a centimeter up. So it's being heated indirectly. And as these fats and juices sizzle onto these hot coils, it's creating the smoke. So I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's definitely smoke rising right now. And that's what's going to cover the meat and the juice. It's going to absorb all that and really make yakitori nice and crispy. So another tip for when to flip yakitori is once the meat gets hot enough, it's on one side, it starts cooking, then it starts releasing the juices and those juices are going to start bubbling up as it's essentially cooking and boiling. And that's when you want to flip it because if you were to leave it boiling downwards, you're going to lose all that juices. So once it starts boiling, if you flip it, then it's going to cook in its own juices and you don't lose those juices. So right here, I'm looking to see that the juices are sort of blistering and coming out. So now I'm going to flip right here this, the chicken wing. This chicken wing, I showed you in the videos before. This is how I serve my chicken wing. Whole chicken right here, or the whole wing, not de deboned. This way, it definitely takes a little bit longer to cook. However, we're gonna get that crispy skin and steamed meat inside. So you get a nice juicy effect inside. And that way, I actually serve this as my very last skewer. So people are gonna be using their hands the whole night, they are able to just grab a skewer and bite straight off. But with the chicken wings though, you have to basically take the skewer out and break it apart as though you're eating buffalo wings, spicy chicken wings. And I really like that contrast of the whole night you have very easy to eat skewer. Now you have to work your way into it. But as I said, when it's whole like this, you get that crispy skin, but really juicy meat inside. All right, so the skin is going. You can always also the sides of the skin too. If you want to crisp up the sides, definitely go and crisp up the sides right here. And if you want to pass it by with the torch, just a little bit. It's going to burn real quick. Just a little bit. Let's get that nice and golden. Yeah, this is sizzling. For the skin, I'm going to go for some lemon to slice lemon. Got some seeds in the lemon. Let's remove that, make it easier on the guests. So these skins are basically done. So this is the mixed skin and then this is the, the breast skin. I'm going to top it off. I have here some pink Hawaiian sea salt. Let's sprinkle that on top. Also leave some on the side. This is both for color and just that extra saltness. All right here is regular lemon. I actually really like to serve this with Meyer lemon just to kind of change up the smell and the flavor a little bit. And another thing that I want to stress about is if you have these paddle skewers, make sure they're facing the same way, especially if you have few skewers and they're all facing different ways. It doesn't look right. It doesn't look neat. So make sure these are, these are small details that a shop in Japan will really care about. So make sure to really care about the details so that your guests, when they see it, eat, they eat with their eyes first or with the Instagram, you know, eat with the camera first. So, you want to make sure everything looks the right way. So all my skewers that have paddle skewers, if you ever notice, they always face the same direction. Okay. Then we are down 
to our last two skewers. So we got the wings, the shisomaki here. For the wings, I would say this area, the wing tip is probably the one that it's the hardest to get to cook. And that's where you can use a torch to, to turbocharge it up. But now that the shisomaki is pretty much ready to go, I'm gonna bring forward the condiments I'm gonna be using. So this is a ume, so the sour plum paste. Earlier I chopped it up for this one, but this comes in a tube and I wanna use this tube so I can easily squeeze it out. And then I also have, these are small fish, basically white fish, usually anchovies or sardines, essentially baby fish. So I'm gonna use this as a topping. So right here, shiso wrapped trimmings. So normally with the trimmed meats, it becomes tsukune, meatball, but I don't have a meat grinder and I'm not gonna do that for just one skewer anyways. So we got here and then I got this ume. Do a zigzag pattern. So having a nice tube really helps that I can draw out the shape that I need. Okay. So we have this, and then I'm gonna to top it off with some of these small fish. And I like to call this the surf and turf. I'm gonna crisp up the fish by torching it a bit. So here we go. We have here, you see the shisomaki or surf and turf. So the trimmings wrapped in shiso leaf with ume sauce and then the small fish on top. So this was an original skewer I came up with based on these are flavor combinations I really enjoyed. Okay, so lastly, we have this pretty much good. This is ready to go. So I'm gonna just torch this edge, tighten it up. You can see that the skin basically is tightened up. So it got that nice heat. But it, it's pretty much, it's cooked. So I'm ready to serve this. And so for this, I want to give it lime, and then that use a cool show that we use on the breast. Let's have this on the side so people can dip it. This is actually my favorite yakitori piece, which is why I save it at the very end for my guests. Teba. Because what more than yakitori than chicken wings, right? What represents tori or bird? Chicken wings. So right here we have lime, yuzukosho, and the chicken wings. And so there we have it. We have all the skewers lined up right here. And let's clean this up and have a feast. And this is why I love yakitori. So we started with one whole chicken and break it apart in all the different pieces and using a grill and just a few other equipment we're able to come up with all these variety of skewers and there's still other skewers that i didn't even grill yet so i think this is the beauty of yakitori this is why i fell in love with yakitori making what we have here we have two different negimas the thigh and then the leg the drumstick different textures, but then you can use different onions and you get a different experience, even though it's the same dish, but just using different muscles just becomes completely two different dishes. Right here, we have the Thai meat, which is the same as this nigima, but without tare, with some lime and some salt right here, it becomes something where you can just really enjoy just the essence of the chicken juices. Right here, chicken tenders. Usually they sell chicken tenders as fried chicken strips. Well, if you skewer it, and cook it nice and evenly on all sides. Put some wasabi on it, put some ume on it. It becomes this delightful, fluffy, tender chicken. Right here, 
knee cartilage. You get to enjoy that crunchy cartilage, the crunchy onion, but it's just one piece so you can just eat it in one bite. I call this the lollipop and it's just, just another way to enjoy yakitori. It doesn't have to be multiple pieces on yakitori. Chicken breast. Normally chicken breast is dry. I like to skip it, but if we put some fats in between, Comes nice and juicy. Put some yuzu kosho paste on top and you get that nice citrusy, a little bit of spice, a little bit of savory. Chicken breast is no longer boring. Shiso maki right here. I'm taking all the trimmings. What I trim and would normally be trash, put it on a skewer, wrap some shiso leaf around it, put plum sauce on it, and then put some fish on it. Now it's a surf and turf. What is normally wasted, I can use this as and make my own, my unique skewer. Right here, we have pieces that normally in a yakitori shop in Japan would just be one whole skewers of maybe neck or one whole skewer of oysters, but I wanted to make sure those oysters or necks can be shared among everyone. So I come up with this combination skewer of neck, shoulder, and butt area. Nice and chewy, crunchy. So that's why I'm using the tare and putting some shichimi to get that extra spice. But then you have the tender skewers of the oysters, the inner thigh, and the tail. Super tender. Leaving it as is, just salt and some sansho, which is uh, Japanese uh, peppercorns, kinome right here, the, the leaves, and some sansho flour on there. So it's a very just subtle floral taste that you have on here. Right here we have chicken skin. This is all the chicken skin, basically on the body of the chicken, packed into a skewer. You want the nice crispy on the outside but chewy on the inside. This is all the breast. This is combinations of butt, belly, back, and neck. All these skins have different textures and by serving it like this, you can enjoy all the different, some are crunchy, some are much more chewier. You can enjoy that. Playing around with the salts, we have some pink Hawaiian sea salt, some lemon over here. We have some black squid ink. So just playing around with colors. And finally, all the skewers, it's all a lot of, you know, bite off the skewer, but with the wings, I serve it whole. That way, it's gonna become crispy on the outside, but steamy and juicy on the inside. And then you have to use your hand to break it apart and eat it. And this just represents, yakitori doesn't always have to be one shape. It doesn't have to be in one bite. It can be using your hands at the end. Yakitori means grilled chicken. So in all forms, this is yakitori, grilled chicken. And what I like about yakitori and what I want to share with the world is just using that one whole chicken. It's a simple electric grill, some salt, some sake, and then just a little bit of extra heat to add that char a little bit. You can make a variety of these skewers. And this is just an example of the skewers that I've been making and been evolving myself over the, over the past two years. However, this is just one way, the way that they did it in the shop in Fukushima where I was at, completely different from this. The shop in Roppongi in Japan, every month they change up the menu, coming up with new skewers. And I really want you guys to be inspired how you can take this one chicken and make a variety of skewers from it. I think the main issue is a lot of people have known yakitori as just some sort of blocks of chicken, skewered, maybe teriyaki sauce on top. That's not what the yakitori that I know and want to share with the world. This is basically the kind of yakitori that I enjoy making and I want to share with people. And basically the kind of yakitori that you're going to find in Japan where there's a lot of thought and details and, and careful precision involved. And that way you can take something as humble as chicken, but make it into something unique and more. And, I really enjoy this process of showing you guys over the past few hours of these videos. I can't thank you enough for those who watched all the way through because you guys wanted to learn. So this is the last of these how to make yakitori at home series that I wanted to sort of conclude from starting out with the whole chicken and making it so that you're grilling it then. So we're done with these series. However, I'm still gonna be pumping out videos every week. We have more videos, how to make tare, how to skewer innards, like the hearts and the gizzards, how do you make tsukune, how to use a charcoal grill. These are all these requests that Yaki Gang, you guys are sending me, and I can't wait to make these videos to help continue to teach you guys more. But I really wanna conclude this series as something that in a span of maybe three hours, three to four hours, I've packed my two, two and a half years of yakitori knowledge into these videos. And if you guys watch it through, in a few hours, you should be able to recreate 
this at home, especially if you keep on practicing. So I definitely encourage you to just keep on trying, making yakitori, cut the chicken, make skewers. Even if it doesn't look right the first time, you're gonna get better and better and better. My skewers looked absolutely horrible in the beginning. And it just over time, it just got better and better. And just it just feels much more natural. So I'm gonna keep on encouraging you guys to keep on making your own yakitori. As I said, this is just an inspiration. I want you guys to come up with your own different styles and methods too. And that's what makes yakitori very fun. So once again, thank you all for watching these hours of videos. I've enjoyed making them. I want you guys to continue sharing them with friends and family. Just help spread the word. It's my mission to help spread yakitori to the world. And you guys are helping me out. So I definitely appreciate you guys with all that. And as, as usual, feel free to leave comments, questions, feedback below. And if you guys are not following me on Instagram, Yakitori Guy, I'm always posting sort of behind the scenes stuff of everything I'm doing. So as I'm pretty responsive on the DMs. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, just hit me up and I'm, I'm glad to help you guys out while I can. So thank you again for watching and we have more videos coming, but you guys made it. I made it. I'm ready to eat these. Thanks, Yaki Gang. I'll see you. See you in the next videos.